Welcome back to Tennis Talk. My name's Cam Williams, and it's time for the weekly ranking show where we go through all the ATP and WTA rankings for the week, and the finals are set. The WTA finals have been set. We had the last tournament of the regular season this week in Guadalajara with some big results. Let's go check out the results from last week because we also had three big events on the ATP that have finals ramifications. So starting with the WTA, and we only had one tournament, a new 1,000 event with the Guadalajara Open and Jessica Bagula. She beat Sakari in the finals 6-2, 6-3 to lift the biggest trophy of her career. She had already qualified for the finals, but Sakari, by making the final, got to qualify for Texas in a few weeks. Over on the ATP, at the Naples Open, we had Musetti defeating Berrettini in the final 7-6, 6-2. So an all-Italian final in Italy. The younger Italian got the win. Over in Stockholm, we had Runa defeating City Pass in an upset. 6-4, 6-4. Big win there from Holger Runa, who really just beat the brakes off City Pass in that final. And at the European Open, Oje Aliassime defeats Korda and wins back-to-back -back trophies in consecutive weeks. 6-3, 6-4. Korda made back-to-back -back finals, so it's also interesting to see him in some form. But yeah, FAA, very impressed with him over the last few weeks. And he's playing for a final spot in Turin. Let's go over to the WTA rankings this week and massive changes to the top 10. Nothing up the top though because Svjontek, she's still number one with Jabir at number two, but Jessica Bagula, she goes up to number three, career high for her, as Contave dropped down to number seven after dropping a lot of points from this time last year. And it won't be the last time we see Contave drop ranking points. Zachary also goes up two spots to number four, pushing Sabalenka down to number five. Goff reaches a career high to get to number six, again, because Contevate lost all those points, and also Goff made a quarterfinal in Guadalajara. And some changes down the bottom as well, with Garcia going up two spots to number eight, pushing Bedosa down to number nine. Bedosa will drop out of the top 10 by the end of the season because she didn't get to qualify for the finals. Simone Halep drops out of the top 10 completely, making way for Kazakina, who comes in at number 10 for this week. So a lot of changes to finish off the regular season. And as I mentioned, the changes don't end there because both Contivate and Bedosa did not qualify for the WTA finals and they will lose a lot of points. Let's go have a look at the race of the finals because it's now complete for the WTA. Starting with Shiontek, she qualified a long time ago. She's at number one with Jabir at number two and Bagula at number three. They've all qualified and they were qualified before this week. Goff is at number four. She qualified after the first round of Guadalajara. But Maria Zachary has come back from number nine all the way up to number five in the rankings, pushing Sabalenka down to number seven. Garcia sits in the middle there at number six and Kazakina also goes down to number eight. And that's where the cutoff was at number eight. So we had some big changes there. Kudamatova just missed out at number nine. And we had a change down the bottom with Madison Keys going up two spots to number 10. She'll be the second alternate. And Paola Bedosa dropped out of the top 10 completely. So the top eight are set. Sviontek, Jabir, Pagula already qualified. Goff qualifies. Zachary qualifies. Garcia qualifies. Sabalenka qualifies. And also Kazakina. And with the alternates being... Kudamatova, who's already playing the doubles in the WTA final, so she'll be there anyway. And Madison Keys, if they need an extra backup. Having a look at the players outside of the top 10 that have gone up the rankings this week on the WTA, and the two players made the semifinals in Azarenka and Buzkova. Azarenka goes up eight spots to number 29, and Buzkova goes up eight spots to number 30, which is a career high for her. So two unseated players that did well at the end of the year to get a last minute boost. And players that went down in the rankings, a couple of players that played well this time last year, Alexandrova, she goes down four spots to number 23. And Lee drops down 52 spots to 117. Both won titles this time last year and weren't able to save those points in Guadalajara. Over to the men's rankings now, and things are going to get really interesting over the next couple of weeks. On the ATP, no major changes to the normal rankings with Alcaraz still at number one, Rafa at two, Rude at three, Medvedev at four, Sitipas at five, Zverev at six, Djokovic at seven, Rublev at eight, but we did have a change down the bottom with Fritz going down to number 10, and Felix Ogier-Aliassime going up to number nine after Felix won a tournament last week in Antwerp. So no big changes there, but a lot of those names are playing next week. Only three of that top 10 are not playing in either Vienna or Basel next week. So expect some changes going into the final weeks of the season. Having a look at the race of the finals and things are starting to heat up. We have five players that have qualified with Alcaraz, Nadal, Pass, Rude, and of course Djokovic. After he won Wimbledon, he qualified despite having less points. We have Medvedev at number six. Rublev at number seven. Ojeli Asim stays at number eight, so he is just on the cutoff line, and he's done himself a lot of favors, winning two tournaments in a row the last two weeks. Fritz goes in at number nine, and Hubi Hercatch 
at number 10. So no big changes there, but as I mentioned before, all the players on this list, except for Nadal and Djokovic, are playing next week in either Basel or Vienna. So expect some changes. In fact, if Medvedev or Rublev win their respective events, they could qualify for the ATP Finals. Let's have a look at the players outside the top 10 that have gone up in the rankings, and it's the two players that won trophies last week with Musetti. He went up one spot to 23 after winning in Naples. That's a career high for him. And Runa, he went up two spots to 25 in the world, which is a career high for him after winning in Stockholm. So two guys who won trophies in upset wins, getting career high rankings as well. And the players going down in the rankings after good results this time last year, Brooksby. He goes down nine spots to number 50. And Karatsev, he goes down 15 spots to number 60 in the world. So very interesting that the two players that couldn't really replicate the points from this time last year, dropping down. So there it is. The finals race for the ladies is complete. We have the top eight playing in Texas uh, in the week, uh, next week, actually, not during this week, next week. So we'll be watching all of that, of course. And the ATP finals are starting to get really interesting too. Only three spots up for grabs with two weeks left. And there's about, realistically, about maybe five to 10 people that could slot into those spots. But the three guys that are in the number six, seven, eight spot are looking pretty good at the moment, especially FAA. He's on fire right now. But let me know down in the comments below. Who do you think is going to qualify those remaining spots? Do you think Medvedev can take it? Do you think Rublev can take one? Do you think FAA can continue his form? Maybe someone outside of that top eight can sneak in at the last minute in either Paris or maybe this week in Basel or Vienna. It's going to be a fun finish to the end, but we've got the WTA Finals set. That's happening in a week. ATP Finals is getting exciting too.